Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks. In this video, I'm going to show you all the coolest, newest, latest features, updates in Ableton Live 10.1. So I'm not even filming myself on camera for an intro. We're just going to dive right in. So I'm going to start with some enhancements and some updates that everyone will use, regardless of genre, skill, production level. You're going to come into, you know, you're going to be in a situation where you'd want to use these features. So Ableton has finally pulled their head out of their ass and allowed you to solo a track with a key command. You could not do this previously. I don't know why. So I can arrow up and down on, on a track. And solo. That's huge, especially for someone like me making sample packs, construction kits, sound sets, what, what have you. I use the solo feature a lot to solo sections of tracks. So that's awesome. So you guys can do that now. So now you can mute and solo all with your mouse, or all without your mouse. Now, Ableton's also added some really nice features and workflow enhancements for zooming and just moving around your sessions. So check this out. Right now, you guys have probably seen sessions like this before where you know one track is you know, super zoomed in, other tracks are pretty tiny. You can hit H on your keyboard and it will redistribute the height of all the tracks in your session evenly. So that's really nice. Now, previously, S would do what this next key command or hotkey does. So if you hit S in version 10, it would collapse the track, right? Well, now what you can do is highlight multiple tracks, one track at a time, hit U, and it will make those tracks smaller, right? Which is really nice. So hit, hit U to undo that. Now you can also do some nice new uh, zooming. So what you can do is highlight a section of a track or multiple tracks at once, hit Z, that will come nice and clean into view. And then you can hit X to get it back, right? And there's a couple new hotkeys as well for zooming. So previously, if you wanted to zoom in, you could hit plus or minus, right, for horizontal zoom. Well, now if you hold down alt or option as you do that, you'll get a vertical zoom. The last little enhancement that I find really noteworthy and valuable is your track overview up here at the top. So if you've ever worked on a session that had a lot of tracks, you will have noticed that you know it, it just starts to grow and get big. And uh, it, could, it could be kind of a pain if you have a smaller screen. So now you can just click up here and resize it to your liking, regardless of the size of your session. All right, so this next feature, again, I haven't seen many people talking about this. I did watch two videos on YouTube about the update and this wasn't even mentioned. And I'm like, holy hell, how did you, how did you not, you know, this is huge, this is awesome. So I use, like I mentioned, I use Logic a lot. And Ableton for sure has, when you're using stock devices, a much easier way creating side chain, right? So for instance, if you want to load up, if you want to do some side chaining, you're probably going to go to the audio effects compressor, pop that on the track, and then you're going to have, you click an arrow, side chain, you're good to go, right? Well, third-party devices or third-party plugins in Ableton didn't have that that feature, right? You, you, you could still side chain, but you'd have to do it at, over here at the track level. Well, now you can do it with third-party plugins. So check this out. Let's, let's bring in the VC2A by Nave Instruments. You can see here that we have the side chain panel on the little device section down at the bottom. That's awesome. Love it. So that's a huge feature. I know a lot of you guys are going to be stoked because you can use, you know, you more easily use your favorite compressors or whatever it might be and access the side chain for that device. All right. So Wavetable has received a huge update. I remember when this was announced, the, the initial, when the, when the synth was announced last year, everyone was so hyped for Wavetable. And then they found out you couldn't add your own Wavetables. <laughs> and everyone's kind of like, oh, Yikes. So uh, Serum it was, right? So this uh, is a big update. You can drag in an audio file and it will convert that to, or try to convert that as best it can to a wavetable, or you can load up actual wavetables. So all your favorite Serum wavetables, massive wavetables, if you have them, right, you can use them in wavetable now, which is awesome. So what I'm going to do is I haven't actually tested this out. I'm doing this for the first time in this video. I'm going to go to our Echo Soundworks core tables pack. This is free. If you guys want literally hundreds of wavetables, you can go to our site and download this. I'll put the link in the, in the description. So when we made this, it was about, it was sometime last, uh, last spring, basically, we made a huge collection of wavetables for multiple synths. Serum users could use it, Tone 2 Icarus, Sonic Kamiana 2, Vengeance Avenger, right? And now you can use all these tables with wavetables. So let's check it out. I want to go to the instrument wavetables because uh, these ones are kind of the most difficult ones to, to translate. So let's actually load in a cello wavetable. And right now it's not going to sound like a cello. <laughs> So what I've done is I've applied a little bit of envelope two modulation to the position of our wavetable. So that that is not how this wavetable should sound. This isn't how it would sound in Anna two or Serum. So there's this raw button 
up here. If you click this, it will try to not maximize essentially each frame or cycle of the wavetable. And this should do the trick. So this should sound more like a cello. There it is. So some wavetables are gonna sound better like that. It looks like all of our instrumental wavetables will work better in the raw setting. So here's a harp. Right, pretty crazy that that's coming from just a uh, wavetable. All right, so now let's get to the two new devices that come with this update. So there's a new delay device as well as a new EQ device. So let's check out the delay on that marimba wavetable that we loaded up. So the delay is really nice. It's kind of in between, you know, like like a typical basic delay and echo. So if you guys have ever used echo, you know that it's a crazy, crazy plugin. Um, it's one of those things that you can get lost in and, and do some really cool sound design stuff, but it's not, you know, it's not like the, the, my, my personal delay of choice when I, you know, need to do something fast or quick. And I just want like a simple delay. That's what this new delay plugin or device is for. So we can see this here. So let's play, let's, uh, right now we have left sync, right sync, super easy, right? So we do 16th notes. couple different modes, repitch, fade, jump, and also ping pong. Right, and then you have a little filter here where you can control what frequencies of the, the wet signal are basically coming through. So very efficient, very easy to use delay. It's probably gonna be my go-to delay now in Ableton when I stay with stock devices. So let's delete this, let's delete echo, and let's check out the new equalizer. So we now have a channel EQ. So this is, this fits a bill for, you know, maybe you just want, you need to control the highs a little bit of a group or a track and, and you don't need the full functionality of EQ8. Now, I personally like this because you might be thinking, well, I can clearly just do that like that in EQ8. Yeah, you can, but you can also do a million other things in EQ8. And this is one of those situations where I like having plugins that I kind of call them utility plugins. They're plugins that I know I won't get lost in making like, oh, what happens if I do this decisions? You know, uh, I bet you a lot of you guys do that, right? You'll be like, okay, I'm loading up this plugin to do this. And then you end up trying 15 other things and 20 minutes goes by and you're like, ah, shit, I just wasted 20 minutes, right? So that's what the channel EQ is for. You have low, mid, high output. You have a high pass. It's a six decibel, uh, six decibel per octave attenuated curve. So it's, uh, it's pretty simple, easy to use and you can color the sound. Pretty much any track, any group, within seconds. That's really nice. So for those of you who love automation, you're gonna love these new features. There's a lot of new automation content in the update. So let's check that out now. So I have a auto pan set up on this chord track here, and let's first automate our rate. Right. So previously, you could you know click and drag up to you know create your create your automation. Makes sense, right? Well, let's say you know you want to create like more of a unique shape, like a sine shape. What you can do now is you can right click, and you can have adaptive grid. You can you can change your grid settings to fit your needs. But what you can do is you can actually insert a shape. So what I can what I've just done is I've inserted a sinusoidal shape right on my on my sound here, and then I can go and edit that. Uh, we can right click, and again we can uh, clear the clear that envelope. So we're gonna pop pop some automation point a point right there and right there and one right there, and then we'll right click and we'll select sine wave, right? So now for our rate, right? And we can also click this and we can you know change the settings here. So if I go, I've made it more narrow now. So if I click and add a little bit of automation over here and do another sine shape, you can see that's much more narrow. And you can actually highlight these points, right? And we can take this and highlight them and we can actually duplicate the automation so I can hit command D right and right, we can get some crazy things going with our automation now another really helpful I think it's really helpful this happens to me quite a bit I'll be automating something and I need to get to a specific value maybe it's something with pitch or, or filter frequency Hertz and it can be kind of hard and tedious to get to a specific value so what you can do right what you can do now is right click edit value and you can actually type in anything you want so we get really really specific 0.30 of a percent right so that's really helpful for when you guys are trying to get really really uh really go really in depth with your automation and be very precise so that's pretty cool 
All right, so this will be especially useful for the Ableton push users out there. If you guys have ever automated anything with the actual hardware control, you know that when you do that, you typically get like a lot of little nodes, a lot of sections within the envelope or within the, you know, the automation shape. And it can be a pain in the ass if you want to make just slight tweaks to it, right? It's a great way to scratch and get down ideas quickly, but to do fine edits, it can be a little bit hard. I have to do this in Logic all the time where I'll have to like, double click or use my eraser tool <laughs> to delete a lot of nodes, kind of a pain. So what you can do now is you can right click on that and you can select simplify envelope. And what Ableton's going to do is it's going to simply basically like, okay, well, we're going to try to uh, figure out the general shape of what you're doing. So this one was pretty simple. It doesn't have a lot of nodes, so it didn't really do anything. Um, I have messed around with it with a, with a hardware controller and it did work. So this might be just because I drew this in with the draw mode. Not entirely sure, but that feature is there where you can, and it isn't there when you, when you only have like one node selected. You have to highlight multiple ones and then click and then you'll have simplify envelope, right? Which is pretty cool. So let's, uh, let's clear that envelope now. And All right, so that's pretty much going to sum up this video. There's a couple other enhancements or minor improvements that have been added that I'm not going to cover in this video. One I do want to cover, but I'm not going to show you. I'm just going to go over it rather, is that you can now freeze tracks that have side chains. So you don't have to do some weird janky work around where you'd like have to put it in a group and then put the side chain, the compressor on like the group track, right? So now you can actually just freeze your tracks that have side chain on the track, which is great. So if you guys like this video, you want to see more videos like it, I'd really appreciate if you hit that like and subscribe button. If you guys have any questions or comments, please post those below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can when I see those. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this update as much as I do. I'll see you next time.